All right, let's go for a lengthy um, representation theory problem. And I just already noticed an issue. Yeah, so what I, I'm going to use different notation. And I know you're going to hate that. But if I try to do it on the fly, it's not going to work. Instead of capital V prime, we're going to use V tilde. And instead of rho prime, we're going to use rho tilde. What else? That's it. Uh, the the only other thing is that the my definition the the way that it's defined for me is that rho g of v tilde comma rho g v equals v tilde v. This is um, for any G in capital G, for any V in capital V, and any V tilde in capital V tilde. So it's the same thing that Ser has, except it's flipped, and I'm not afraid to use little g as an element of a group. And I'm going to do that throughout this exercise, too, so don't don't freak out. Um, yeah, okay, so this inner product is denoting the value of the linear form at this, so it's just evaluation. So we could like write, because we don't want to write rho g of v tilde at rho g of v, that, that's just way too many parentheses. The, the inner products here are nice to um, reduce the number of parentheses that we have to write. And also note that these angular brackets are in no way related to the inner product that we have on characters or on uh, I guess on class or just just on functions on G in general uh, that's uh, that refers to a different thing and thankfully that doesn't come up at all in this problem so we don't have there's no go there's not going to be any ambiguity between what this inner product means all right so let's start to find rho tilde as above I should write that better we must first prove that rho tilde is a linear representation of G on V tilde. So first we have to prove it's a well-defined map. To prove that rho tilde is well defined, um, well we want rho, we want rho sub G we want rho tilde of g to be well defined for all g and g. Uh, we're going to say that v tilde equals w tilde as elements of v tilde. Then can we somehow, what we want to prove then is that rho, we want to prove that rho g tilde will send these two to the same place. Um, so if rho v, if v tilde equals w tilde, then v tilde v equals w tilde v for all v and capital V. So in particular, V evaluate at rho G inverse V is equal to W tilde evaluate at rho G inverse of V. And this is, um, we, you, we, we use our definition of the, oh, no, 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 no. No, no, 
No, we haven't defined Rotilda. We have not defined Rotilda yet. That is something that we would like to do. Doesn't make sense to define. Whew. So, what is row tilde? So that there exists a unique linear representation. So, okay, so define row tilde such that for all v and v and for all uh, eh, tilde v and tilde v rho g of v tilde evaluated at v so this is def so we want to define rho tilde by what it's a value by what rho tilde g v tilde how that acts on capital V. So we're going to define this such that this is always equal to V tilde at rho g inverse V, where rho is, we know is a linear representation. We know really nice things about it. So what we're actually going to prove is we're going to prove that rho tilde satisfies every thing that this row prime satisfies in the problem and then by uniqueness uh, we're gonna it's gonna work by uniqueness so yeah let's go from here so we want to prove row G is a well is well defined so then in particular this holds ie using our definition of row tilde we have we can bring this rho g to the other side and this will become rho g tilde g of v tilde v equals rho tilde g of w tilde v. And this holds um, This holds for all v and v, so rho g v equals rho g w. These are, of course, rho tildes. And hence, rho tilde g is well defined. Okay, so there's that. Let's see here. So certainly rho tilde g maps v tilde into v tilde. And that's because rho, rho tilde g of v tilde is precisely going to give us, OK. Let's write it out because rho g tilde v, this is equal to w tilde, where w tilde satisfies this. It's just going to give us v tilde rho g inverse v. Okay, so we, so, so this defines, um, yeah, so it defines a linear, so, so yeah, so it defines an element of V tilde. So that's all we need there. As for linearity, so we need rho G to be linear. We have for all v tilde in v tilde v I'm I'm not going to use all the upside down a's 
for all these, these, and these. Yeah, this is going to be long, so I'm going to have to be scrolling down a lot. I'm going to take this inner product, rho g tilde of v tilde, applied to c1, v1, plus c2, v2. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically pass this to facts about rho, which we know is a linear representation and thus we'll be able to work with. So this is just v tilde applied to rho sub g inverse of the c1 v1 plus c2 v2. But now we know that this is equal to c1 rho g inverse v1 plus c2 rho g inverse v2. And then this, let's see here, because this is, uh, we know that v tilde, is, uh, th these are, the v tilde is the dual vector space, and so it's the vector space of linear functionals on v. Well, linear functions on, yeah, linear functions on V, which are linear functionals. Um, but anyways, so they're linear. So V tilde, so we can break this up. So this becomes V tilde, C1 rho G inverse. But not, not only that, but um, we can bring these constants outside as well. So this becomes C1 V tilde rho G inverse V1 plus C2 v tilde rho g inverse v2 and then this is just c1 rho g of v tilde v1 plus c2 I lost tildes here rho g v tilde V2. Where do the tildes belong? The tildes belong here and here. Man, whoever was grading my assignment was really lenient because I got full points on this one. Then again, that that was just like a forgotten, some forgotten tildes. Um, as for linearity, this holds. And so that confirms this is linear. You must now confirm Wow. Must now confirm that for all S and T in capital G rho tilde S of rho tilde T is equal to rho tilde of S T. because that's the last thing that we need for this to actually be a linear representation. For all v and v, and for all v tilde and v tilde and v and v, let's just do this. We're gonna, it's basically gonna be the same computation as the last time. You just pass everything to row and then just get all your facts that way. I really hope that this is gonna like capture everything because I'm gonna be scrolling down a lot and I don't have the air conditioning running my apartment so that it's like not so loud that you can't hear me at all but that also means that there's nowhere for all the heat to go and so I think my laptop might just like explode in a fiery explosion and um, but even if that doesn't happen it's still going to be the case that this will be a very slow video and you're, it's only gonna like it's it's gonna be like like a fourth of a frame per second on average or something like that. Um, and I know those videos are really rough to watch, but these exercises are kind of hard to do, and hopefully they're harder to do than they are the videos hard to watch. If that 
is makes sense in English. So anyways, we just push everything over to the right side and do the things in with row and then you push it back to the left side. And so yeah. This means and this holds for every v and v tilde and so rho s tilde of rho t tilde equals rho s t tilde or rho tilde s t whatever so are we done no all that remains is to prove that for all g and g rho g is in the general linear group on v tilde i.e. rho g tilde we know it's a map from v tilde to v tilde uh, and we know it's linear but now we need to know that it is invertible because if it's invertible then it's a bijection but rho tilde g of rho tilde g inverse equals rho tilde of g g inverse, which is rho tilde of e, where e is the identity of g. So, let's see here, that, that should be, right, uh, rho tilde of e is just going to be the identity element of GLV tilde. Um, so rho G tilde is invertible with inverse rho tilde of G inverse. Hence, Rho tilde is a linear representation of G on V tilde. All right, and we're done. Just kidding. We are not. We have to do more things. Next, given G and G, V and V, and V tilde in V tilde, I claim that the inner product of rho G, that, that rho G tilde V tilde evaluated at rho G V equals V tilde evaluated at V. And so indeed, rho tilde G v evaluated at this and the next exercise is even longer so this is just we know by our definition that we can just move everything over to the other side so this is just rho g inverse of rho g of v but that's just v tilde of rho sub e of v uh, but that's precisely because rho sub e is the identity this is just this that's as desired and so we're done with this part finally we must prove uniqueness So note that if V tilde and W tilde are in V capital V tilde and G is in G, then since if we look at the collection of rho G V where V is in V, then this is going to be equal to V because that's what it means for rho to be a linear representation on capital V. 
I mean, of course you could, like, take capital V and, like, add a whole bunch of other basis vectors to it, and rho would still map G into the general, general linear group on that vector space, but it wouldn't do anything to those extra basis elements that you just added. Um, and so we, 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 basi we basically just sort of assume that when we say that rho is a linear representation on V, that it's, uh, I don't know, I don't think transitive is the right word. It's, it's, it's almost the right idea, but I don't know if it's quite the right word. But basically that, that precisely this holds, that you can get to all of capital V by feeding, um, by feeding elements of capital V through row G for any G. So, then since this is equal to this, which is equal to V, we know that row tilde this, this equals W tilde row G V for all V and V, if and only if the inner product of V tilde with V is equal to the inner product of double tilde, W tilde with V for all V and V, because we can just interchange the image of capital V under row G with the image of, with just elements of capital V. And this is only, this holds if and only if V tilde equals W tilde. So suppose rho hat is a linear representation of G on V tilde satisfying the same desired properties. I'm not going to relist them. Then for all G and capital G, V tilde and capital V tilde, and V and capital V, we have the inner product, or rho hat G V tilde evaluated at rho G V, we know is equal to V tilde V. But we also know that this is equal to rho hat or rho tilde g v evaluate at rho g v. So let's see here. So what does this tell us? This tells us that, like, these are the same that the that these two are the same maps because they evaluate because let's see your rho hat sub g of okay so this holds for all. I'm, I'm basically going to stop writing at this point and maybe like I assume at this point the screen is only up up like refreshing every like 30 seconds or something ridiculous like that so maybe if I just talk the rest of this out it'll give the screen time to catch up whatever anyways at this point so we know that this equation that rho g hat of v tilde evaluated at rho g v is going to give you uh, v tilde evaluate at v. And that's the same thing that will happen if you evaluate rho g tilde of v tilde at um, rho g of v. And But this holds for all little v and capital V. And so basically evaluating rho g hat and rho g tilde at any element, and, and because we can get to all of capital V by looking at elements of the form rho sub g of little v, then we know that rho g hat and rho g tilde 
are going to evaluate to the same things when evaluated at any element of capital V. And so that means precisely that rho g hat of capital V is going to be equal to rho g tilde of cat of no rho g hat of v tilde is going to be equal to rho g tilde of v tilde. Now this holds for every single v tilde in capital V tilde, and that tells us that rho g hat is equal to rho g tilde, and this holds for all g in capital G, and that tells us that rho hat is equal to rho tilde. And so there we go. That's how you get from this statement to ensuring the uniqueness of rho tilde as the only linear representation with these properties. And so there you go. We've finally completed this proof.